Coming at you live, probably from two different locations, which is causing me a whole bunch of heartache. This is the Blue Heaven Podcast. <laughs> what is going on, Dodgers Nation? I'm questioning whether or not it is worth it anymore in my life. I go by Real FRG on the internet. Yay. It's not, it's not your name on, on, on Twitter or anything like that, but it could be if you want it to. Guys, my name is Brooke. You can find me at BrookeMe3 on Twitter and Instagram. And we are doing this show responsibly. We're doing it separate. We're doing it for, uh, we're still doing it for you. You know, we're Trying. still doing it. We're still here every week. We're still going to be here every week throughout the rest of the year. How many more shows do we have left after this one? Three? After, three? After this, three? it's two more. Uh, two more? We, yeah, we got to figure it out. I love that you look like you are uh, literally in a fish tank or we're in a fish tank and looking at you. Uh, this thing huh. might be still struggling right now. If it is. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry, guys. Um, what's great about this is that uh, this is also the podcast, so I strip this audio, and if it sucks, hey, who needs to sleep? But anyways, guys, uh, yeah, only a couple more of these this this, uh, this year, so let's have some fun. This beat is sick, and uh, we got to talk about that cold stove, hot stove. Uh, it, today begins the winter meetings, whatever those are supposed to look like. So um, are, are you excited, question mark? Me personally, yeah. No, I, I, I don't care very much. I don't really care about the normal. Like even when it's a normal year, winter meetings, I don't really feel like a lot gets done. I think like, I think good conversations happen, but I don't think a lot really gets done. But yeah, you know, hot stove via Zoom general meeting, general manager. It's just gonna be weird. Yeah, I don't we'll know. get more into that in a little bit. We do got to talk about that big time acquisition. The Dodgers traded for a relief arm, Corey Knebel, one-time All-Star. We got to talk about him and what that means for uh, the the Doyers coming up in 2021. Uh, the DH is a big time topic today in in the uh, in the universe. So we got to talk about that for baseball people. Uh, we're gonna have our next giveaway. We're gonna announce the winner of our Tommy Lasorda autographed baseball, and uh, and then do the other thing. Uh, uh, announce our next giveaway. Uh, so that's a cool with our friends over at Elite Sports Collectibles. So um, first, got to remind you, this is a podcast. It's going to sound like crap, and I apologize for that, but we are on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, anywhere you guys can find us uh, by searching Blue Heaven Podcast. If you could rate us there, that would mean a lot. Don't let technology-based uh, uh, change your, your rating. You should probably give us a five-star because we're trying, and that's all that matters. Uh, we're doing our best. <laughs> and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash TV. Hit that notification bell. Wait, I have my button somewhere. Uh, uh, there you go. Bike bell, desk bell. We're going to double bell you. You'll be glad you did that. Um, I see Leslie saying, Brooke is pale and garbled. So I guess you look normal. That's just that's just my normal. Like, I don't I don't see the problem there. I don't see the issue. That's just who I am. Thank you, though. Thank you for noticing. I am pale and garbled. Guys, don't forget, it is a live show. Uh, as not alive as we might look. This is blurry heaven, if you're just tuning in. Uh, make sure you drop in. Let us know where you're watching tonight. We want to shout you out. Even if you can't really see us that well, we still want to shout you out, acknowledge you. We appreciate you guys being here, even during the tough times, because there's always going to be good times. There's always going to be tough times. But regardless, we appreciate you being here. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I just need a beer to kick in, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Manuel, we got Manuel on the Facebook saying, Sign Hendrix. Uh, okay, I will get right on that. I'm going to do my best. Um, we got do it. Def Francisco do it. saying bring back Ted Lilly. I don't think we're gonna do that. Oh boy! <laughs> Actually, Francis Francisco is apparently the uh, the troll of the stream because he's also saying bring back John Broxton. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do that. <laughs> he's on it. He just wants all the old players back. And Chad Billings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rough. Um, go ahead and find a few more comments while I get settled in here and try to. Tony over on Facebook calling in for our calling in. I guess we don't do call-ins yet, guys. We're too afraid of that. Uh, checking in from Facebook. Mike over on Periscope checking in from Visalia. Thank you for being with us. Kevin on Facebook checking in from Long Beach. Frank from Facebook checking in from Tempe, Arizona. I like it. Look at all these Arizona fans we have checking in with us. I love that uh, even in their own state, the Diamondbacks can't get fans, which is just are brilliant. They, are they still a team? Yeah, I've, I've heard that a few times, once or twice. Wilfredo over on Facebook, checking in from Palmdale. Frank on Facebook, East L.A. Andre Garcia <laughs> over on YouTube says, bring the stash back. Um, hey, if you had the stash, yeah. the stream would be working, all right? 
Yeah, yes. yeah, that was that was what was holding it all together, the facial hair. Right, Brian, let's... Facebook, Douglasville, Georgia. Oh, Thank wow. you for being here. We Douglasville, got, Georgia. We also got Memphis, Tennessee. Jeff over there on Facebook. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, as Brooke always likes to say, we are Mr. and Mr. Worldwide. Uh, we are. Daniel says that we have the EFIS Wi-Fi. I really don't know <laughs> why this thing, because this was the same exact setup. Right now, I'm running the same setup we did the pregame shows for and we had no problems with the pregames now i guess just everybody's home and it's later at night so uh yeah it's annoying but at least claire's here from montreal we appreciate you guys um let's dig into it it's about time we start talking about some dodger baseball stuff the dodgers did a thing uh last week of course as tends to happen in the off season the big move happens the day after we go live so Corey canable 2017 National League All Star closer is a Los Angeles Dodger. Uh, how do you feel about the move? Where how do you rank this move in terms of um, I don't know. I don't even know how to rank it. Like what you expected from the Dodgers so far this off season. Yeah, I think it was a uh, <laughs> it was a very Andrew Friedman Dodgers new era type of move where you take a guy who has just been derailed by injuries um, and who at at one time was a very good all star level closer. Um, I mean, you look at the blueprint of Corey Knebel and everything that's written about him and <laughs> like all the peripherals that go into his good years, um, setting aside maybe setting aside his bad years a little bit. High spin rate guy. He's a guy that can get a lot of ground balls when he's on, can give up a lot of home runs when he's not on, which has kind of been the case this year. Uh, had a really good late break in the season, but he, I mean, everything about him tells you that he's replacing Blake Trinan. Like every single thing about him is like, this is just Blake Trinan's replacement. He does have the potential to be better than Blake Trinan was uh, for us this year. Blake Trinan this year was not that great. Uh, when you look at his numbers, he did the job. He got the job done, ate up some innings, showed up in the playoffs, did all you could ask of him. Um, but I, I like it when I, the original news was that he had been non tendered by the Brewers. And yeah. so in my mind, I was like, the dude's going to have a lot of people after him. There's going to be a lot of teams in on him. Uh, does he go to the angels? Does he go to the Dodgers? Does he go to any, I don't know. But then it was like, Hey, Oh, Hey, I guess he wasn't non tendered. He's been traded now. So it's like, Oh, okay. That works out. I'll take it. Yeah. I think uh, Nightingale was on that first. Uh, Hey, they, oh, yeah. he's been non tender. So classic Bob bomb right there. Um, yeah. When, if you look at the chatter, uh, from MLB insiders talking to their rival GMs and all that. Uh, everybody seemed to love it right away. And, and like you said, you know, there are, there are a few reasons that, that we should love it, that fans should love it too. Again, this, this guy was, was pretty damn gnarly just a couple of years ago. He blew out his elbow in 2019. He was just really coming back, trying to figure it out in 2020. And, uh, a recent conversation with, uh, Alana Rizzo on the Sportsnet LA, he had pointed out like, uh, you know, Dr. Neil Elitrash, who is the Dodgers team physician. He was also the guy who did the Tommy John for him uh, or the Jimmy John, as they call it, <laughs> as I call it. I am they. Hi, am they. Uh, he's not a video guy. And, and El Dr. Elitrash said you should probably get into video because you're going to take this much time off. You're not going to know your landing points. You're not going to feel right. And he was like, yeah, you know, he was right. So now he's coming to the Dodgers where Dr. Neil is there. Uh, he got Dr. Rob Hill and Dr. Mark Pryor and, and Dr. Uh, Connor, Connor McGregor, <laughs> Connor McGinnis. <Nice>. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a, a lot of people that are going to heavily convince him that video is the way. And uh, and the, I think they really can get those mechanics uh, squared out because, dude, like y you saw some of those overlays, you've seen some of those pitches, nasty fastball. You used to have like a 97, 98 fastball, uh, wicked knuckle curve. I think he throws a knuckle curve or just wicked curveball. So you start getting that profiling in the back end of the bullpen. That could be, you know, sort of the guy that that we thought Joe Kelly could have been when we signed him. Uh, or right. hoped. I don't think anybody ever thought Joe Kelly was going to be good, but uh, I like the move. I mean, things profile the right way for the Dodgers to be able to fix him, and and he's he's healthy. It's it's kind of relatively low cost because or, or, or low risk, high reward type thing because it's only five million dollars that I don't have, but 
I know. Uh, there's a lot of reasons jump to change. like the move. Yeah, <laughs> jump change exactly. So he he does fit that profile of Andrew Friedman. Earlier in the offseason, he's like, we want a lot of different looks out of the bullpen this year, and everyone was like, well, what the hell does that mean? And <laughs> yeah. you know, you start looking at arm angles and mechanics and pitch arsenal and all the things that go along with it, and now just all of a sudden you're looking at a trio of guys who uh, come with very different deliveries, very different pitch mixes, very different different arm angles in uh, Victor Gonzalez and Bruce Dark Ratterall and now in Corey Knable. That is what they mean by mixing it up. That is what they mean by giving, giving different looks out of the bullpen. I think in the past and as recently as this year, they've had too many arms that are almost exactly the same coming out of the bullpen one after another. And if you're not mixing those up, it's almost like pay- – facing the same pitchers a lot of times. So I think this gets that job done. I think it accomplishes and checks a few things off the box. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, not really a big deal. $5 million down the drain, not much of a loss for the Dodgers. But um, they So they add an arm, but I don't think that's it. I don't think they're done. Do you think they're going to add more big arms? Because there are a lot of big arms out there still. Yeah, I mean... Andrew Friedman already made it made it known or made it seem like no we're not done we're we're going to find some more bodies um I mean you honestly you won't be surprised if they if they see Trinan uh, if we see Trinan come back if the market is kind of like you know low enough here because um well I mean this is a very weird off season we have had no no real what big signings nothing exciting all off season, we're already in into the first uh, what now second week, sort of technically of December. I think we're gonna see some people taking some real, real low money. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Yeah, um, generally there's like something. <laughs> Free agency always seems to start out with a guy that you don't think is going to get a lot of money and you, he gets a ton of money. And then you're like, all right, well, that's just how free agency is going to go this year. It's going to be one of those years. It's happened with Travis Darno. That's a good example of that. Um, this is a different year. This is the first year that we've seen non-tender candidates be legitimate arms and legitimate candidates for starting jobs on good teams because teams are looking to save some money. Um, you look at the Cleveland Indians, that's a perfect example. That's a team that can compete. That's a team that can compete for the playoffs even next year. Mm -hmm. Brad Hand, who is a legitimate closer um, on any team. Like, I mean, any on the Dodgers, he's a legitimate closer. I mean, that's not a good example. We have Kenley Jansen. Things haven't been going well, but... um, (laughs) Well, you said legitimate closer. Financially. Yeah. Financially, you look at this year and teams are trying to save money. And a lot of the uh, non big market teams, if you want to call them that, are kind of just like, screw it. Like, we're going to let these guys go. We're going to save, you know, X amount of money. The Reds just let Rice Iglesias go um, because he was going to be owed $9 million. Another dude that is a solid arm that the Angels basically got, you know, they. They, they gave up a lot in the sense of that they non-tendered a couple of really good arms to save money to get somebody like that. But they gave up Noe Ramirez, land a huge closer for them, a guy who can actually throw a Major League Baseball, which they haven't had in a couple of years. It's, um, it, it's a weird market. This is going to be a really strange year. I do think this is the year for bigger teams, uh, and I mean teams with more money yeah. and better TV deals, to capitalize on that. And I think it's going to make it really, really tough on those teams that just don't have the money to sustain this year because, I mean, if you're looking to recover from last season, this season, you're, you're not going to have a good year. You're just not going to have a good year. And we've already started seeing the signs of that with some of the smaller teams. Even Tampa Bay is like, we got to get rid of Blake Snell. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I think good, they, good quickly, uh, they quickly backed away from that. I doubt they're going to get rid of their guy just after screwing him on the national stage there in the uh, in game six of the World Series. But, um, you know, I I would really uh, I wouldn't be surprised, though, like to see you, you look at those uh, the, the kind of the way Doc talked about almost he almost seem resigned to the fact that Kenley's going to be the Dodgers guy next year. Um, right. Doesn't seem like that's his first choice. I don't know if there's another choice. You might get more of that bullpen by committee, but you start getting those guys. You know, you still do have Kenley. You bring in Knabel. If you're able to get a Hendricks, I've seen uh, a few people talk about the the uh, Liam Hendricks getting him in. Uh, I think if you get Liam Hendricks, you, you all of a sudden now have the potentially the best bullpen of the National League. As of right now, uh, you have a number of really good names, names that have done things in the past. 
Uh, you hope they can do a little bit more, but uh, you know you need to replace as much as it pains me to say it uh, to say his name on this show. Uh, Pedro Baez, you need to replace him. Blake trying to, like we already mentioned, but you got Kenley, you got Knable, you got Joe Kelly, you got Bruzdar, you got Dylan Floro. Uh, you hope you hope Bruzdar can find a little bit more of a strikeout ball, uh, but that's still that's asking for a lot. And if you're trying to um, you're trying to repeat, I don't know if that those arms they don't strike much fear in me. Tbh, I don't know how you feel about it because. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, I we both know that. Go ahead. We both know the Dodgers have a history of of just. <laughs> I, I don't want to say cheaply running the bullpen. That's not that's not a fair way to put it. Mm-hmm. But they do have a, they do have a history of kind of just hodgepodging together a bullpen that ends up getting the job done somehow, and that ultimately is kind of how the twenty twenty World Series ended up shaping out. No one expected Victor, Victor Gonzalez to be as big of a factor as he was in twenty twenty. I don't think the Dodgers expected him to be as big of a factor as he was in twenty twenty. But he showed up, had a huge ground ball percentage, got the job done every single time, and do soft contact. And they're like, all right, well, I guess we can take him to the playoffs with us. And he was huge in the playoffs. So when you're looking at the names on the list, as a rival, as somebody who's going to be competing with the Dodgers, you don't look at that list and go, oh, crap, what a bullpen. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah. like the it's not like the three-headed monster that the Yankees created over the last couple of years or anything like that. It's not going to jump out at you. Could potentially get the job done, but there are, again – as has been the case for the past like five years, there are a lot of ifs in that bullpen. Big time, big time ifs, uh, quality ifs. But you don't want to again. You don't want to look to repeat with uh, with ifs. Like um, you know, there's, we have a guy that you and I are very high on. We just interviewed him, so here's a a chance to to drop that. Uh, uh, I don't know how you want to say that, but to uh, <laughs> tickle our own flute here. <laughs> I don't know, but we talked to our boy, uh, World Series champion. Tony Gonsolin, and, and um, so check that out. It is on our YouTube channel. We got some posts on our website, DodgersNation.com. Do check those out. Uh, but um, he's an option for for a bullpen role next year too. And if he knows, like that's one thing we we've seen about Tony and and talking to him, he we know he just wants to any role. He wants to be in the big leagues. Um, yeah. We know uh, that if he knows the role that he's going to have, he could probably excel at it. So. When he knew he was a starter, he did great. When he was bounced around, didn't know what he was doing, he did poorly. <laughs> so that that could be a thing. But um, still, those are too many kind of what ifs, like like you had mentioned. So you got to have more arms to repeat. And as they say, the winter meetings are when things get done, even though they're weird. And I'm I'm really hoping they have a better internet connection than we do, because boy, howdy, we That's don't have. <laughs> Um, you, know, you know, there might be some hacking issues at the winter meetings this year. So that's going to, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, the 14 year old teenager yelling at the, through the computer at Andy Friedman or something like that. Get, get me to those winter meetings. I'll, I'm going to be like, hello, it's me, Andrew Friedman. And then I'm just going to sign <laughs> everybody. And then Andy's going to get the check. But, um, I think one of my favorite parts about this winter meetings is, is going to be Scott Boris's kind of like cry fest. Cause this is usually, you know, Scotty's show, it kind of feels like. Uh, the, they are made, the, the winter meetings are designed for Scott Boris, and that's it. Yeah, pretty much. Specifically. Sorry, I see somebody saying, why did, why did we choose this green grab of uh, of us with our eyes closed? We're, we're not. <laughs> this is this is called bad internet. Or not even bad internet, bad hardware. So, I mean. I said I'm, it makes me look disinterested. Joke's on you. I am disinterested. <laughs> Well, that tends to happen when we're uh, struggling and we shouldn't really have to be. But um, so we're here about 730 on a Monday and uh, we can see over the last over the weekend, over the last day or two, even today, uh, as we hit these winter meetings, people are just dying for headlines they're dying for trades or dying for anybody to to uh, anything to happen in the game. And I, I mean. We're seeing some people run wild with with little slivers of, you know, player name and Dodgers, even if they're not related. Uh, we saw that a little bit today, but let me run down the list real quick, and we'll break down each of them. Uh, we'll kind of debunk each of these. So Kike Hernandez allegedly has been linked to the Minnesota Twins. 
uh, Jock Peterson to the Milwaukee Brewers. Today, ESPN's Jeff Passan, uh, he kind of passively mentioned DJ LeMahieu as a as an option for the Dodgers. So we'll, we'll stick with that. People lost it on that one. And, and some Cleveland writer, baseball guy type guy I've never heard of, uh, kind of irresponsibly, in my opinion, put out that Frankie Lindor has said that he wants to play for the Dodgers. So let's let's dig into those real quick, provided people can hear us and people can see us. Kike Hernandez to uh, to the Twins. How does that does that pass your your sniff test? Uh, yeah, I mean, if if you're looking at it from from the outside, looking in at their organization, obviously, I don't know the organization top to bottom, but Kike fits what they're trying to do. Um, if they're <laughs> I don't know what's happening with Nelson Cruz. I don't. I don't even know how he's still playing, so I can't really include that in the conversation. But if he's not there, and you can move a lot more guys around, um, Kike Hernandez he gives you a lot of flexibility. He can move all around the diamond, give guys rests off their feet, move guys onto the bench, move guys to the DH position if Nelly is not there. If Nelly is there, he has to be the DH. I don't think there's any other option for him. Um, but on paper, you know, it all adds up. It all makes sense. Um, he won't cost them an arm and a leg, which I think is exactly the kind of thing that they're looking for. He is kind of the, I mean, he's not a Marwin Gonzalez build or anything like that, or doesn't profile as a Marwin Gonzalez, but he can move around, has a glove. Um, I don't know. If, if you were saying like, what what are the odds that this is true? I would yeah. put it more towards this is true than not true. It, that's that's the best way I can put it. This one definitely passed sniff test for me. They they need a replacement. I was shocked to see that that Marwin was only thirty one. I or coming on thirty two. I thought he was like ninety years old. Just felt like it. But uh, I feel like he's been around forever. He really has, uh, or it, it really does feel that way. Jock Peterson to Milwaukee. How does this uh, float on your radar? Um. <laughs> It doesn't really float on my radar, yeah. huh. but it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. Well, this, I don't know. This doesn't help. We're it's, debunking. It's, it's tough to, it's tough to, it's really hard to gauge market value on Jock Peterson because Dodger fans just don't value him as much as I think other major league baseball teams do. And I think we've had that conversation a lot, but if you're looking at it from a logical standpoint, I think he, I don't know if he fits into that ballpark too well, but on the flip side of it, Ryan Braun is uh, 94 years old or however old he is. Um, if you're looking for an exciting bat, he's an exciting bat. They've had a lot of big sluggers like him, big slugger types out there um, in uh, Prince Fielder and Justin Smoke and those type of guys that have played out that way. So, uh, on yeah, sure. Why not? Actually, you know what? You changed my mind. Yeah, <laughs> that one makes sense to me. Yeah, uh, they, they need outfield. They need anybody that'll help. Uh, I don't know if... Uh... If Jock is looking for for big uh, big bucks, I don't know if he's gonna get big bucks. And, I, and if he was, it wasn't gonna be this style of an off season and 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 coming off such a bad regular season. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, they have a need. Milwaukee has a need. And if if there's gonna be players out there for a long time, they're gonna be looking to sign just about anywhere. So. You know, plus plus Jock he's a the, Packers fan, so that works out. Jock the uh, the Milwaukee Brewer kind of kind of makes sense. You know, uh, passing the uh, I'm sure you saw the DJ the Mayhew mention uh, in his article as being somebody the Dodgers could consider, and, and I'm assuming you as a responsible person looked at that and was like. Uh, okay, that is not a a uh, the Dodgers are talking to Lemayhu. No, the 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 point that he's trying to make in his article is that look, the Yankees don't have complete monopoly on DJ Lemayhu situation. There are other teams that could possibly interest be interested that have money to do so. That being said, I don't see that fit at almost at all. Almost at all. I mean, if you're gonna if you are going to pass on Justin Turner, you're not gonna pass on him to replace him with like a guy who doesn't play third base very often or particularly well. I think he's played like less than a hundred games at third base or something like that in his career. Not a third baseman. He's a second baseman. A big freaking second baseman, but he's a second baseman. Yeah, and if you're gonna oh, go again, if you're gonna drop JT, you're gonna do it for one of your younger guys. You're gonna prepare for the future. You're not gonna just pave away for a new old guy to come through. Eventually, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. It and it 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 didn't read like that to me. He's about to be 33 next year ish, give or take. If I'm right about that, um, 
I think I think passing more meant it as hey, don't don't read this too much as a it's just the Yankees talking to DJ type of deal. Yeah, no, good call. Uh, I thought that that came off uh, pretty obvious in the article, but again, we are all so so thirsty for Dodgers news. We acting like a bunch of thirsty hoes, and, and we're gonna construe anything we want any particular way. For example, Cleveland.com writer whose name escapes me put out. <laughs> Again, in my opinion, it's irresponsible for him. Uh, I mean, again, he didn't tweet it, so I guess it's kind of okay. But uh, he said that Frankie just Lindor wrote <laughs> has said that he would like to play for the Dodgers. Um, uh, professional analysis, my ass, he has said that. He would have no reason to have said that, uh, even if he did. You writing it somewhere in the lower third of of an article that has no – huge direction maybe not the time to be doing that in an off season like this so i i i interpreted that as a um he was asked at some point like oh hey if you got traded to the dodgers would you like that would you like to play for the dodgers and he was like yeah sure I, yeah i'd like to play for the dodgers sure why not they were like oh frankie says he wants to play for the dodgers and it's like oh, that's not the context of what happened at all but even then i find that hard to believe it it's, it was just really irresponsible to me and yeah it's a clear clear effort to draw attention to somebody which is unfortunate but it happens happens a lot he's an older gentleman so he didn't notice that or he doesn't know that you're supposed to tweet that kind of stuff and that's how you make that happen Tweet it, and yeah, then tweet you get the notoriety. Yeah. Or more there. likely destroyed. Definitely um, destroyed. <laughs> so it's already day one of uh, of our winter meetings. And as we can see, nothing major is happening. Nothing minor has happened. I guess the Angels trade is something. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's probably the most significant significant move so far. <laughs> it's it's funny we're looking at this and and kind of comparing it to last season, where Scott Boris alone made like what eight hundred million dollars in contracts or something like that. <laughs> no, I think he he made like over a billion dollars in contracts. Wild money. Let's just say wild he went money went off. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to be lucky to see uh, you know Jock Peterson sign somewhere and and maybe like the third best uh, right-handed reliever go to, well, not the Reds, because the Reds have no money or don't want to play, apparently. They're just giving up everybody. Uh, I, I don't know what a few of these teams are doing, to be honest, kind of get off track a little bit, but I've seen I've seen a, a, a soul bro on, uh, on YouTube here. And thank you guys for hanging out with us still, even though you can't, uh, can't really see us. We're all grainy or weird. Um, now I'll say that it, you're like, it's like you're listening to the podcast. So, uh, listen to our beautiful, sometimes garbled voices, but, um, I mean, this seeing, is just an effort to get more people to subscribe to the actual <laughs> podcast. That's how we're doing this. That's why we started as a podcast, but, um, exactly. you know, to see the reds, you know, give up their, their closer in a trade, uh, drop Archie Bradley for nothing to see the, the, the Rockies give up on David Dahl was, was a wild one right there. Um, I don't know if there's going to be enough jobs to go around for these people, man. Yeah, it's it seems like a really, man, seems like a really odd thing that's happening in baseball. I and mean, we just kind of talked about it a little bit, but teams are trying to look for ways to save money. And if they don't think they're going to compete necessarily this coming season in the 2021 season, then they're going to cut the guys that they don't want to pay for this year. So it is odd to see so many good names lose a job and then to look at it and be like, well, what happens now? Because if they don't want you, who wants you? They're going to go play in that weirdo uh, new independent league they made up. <clears throat> or probably not, because that would be a dumb move. Go to KBO. KBO can be uh, uh, MLB light. Boom. Make it so, uh, baseball people. Um, before we move on, before we uh, uh, officially announce our giveaway winner. Wait, did, okay, you did. You did pick one. I see it written down. I did. <laughs> Uh, as as a proper news program that we are not, we have to bring some heartbreaking news here to you, Dodgers Nation. Uh, it's heartbreaking news for a lot of people, uh, ourselves included. Corey Seager, Dodgers MVP shortstop, is officially off the market because MVC's got uh, hitched over the weekend to his uh, lovely bride, Maddie. 
And, uh, I mean, those two just look ridiculous. Like, I don't know if there's ever been a more photogenic couple um, and not had, like, any work done. <laughs> but, uh, so, what yeah. is it? Congrats to the end of the Seeger clan, uh, along with Hazel. It looked like a, a very nice ceremony. I'm surprised we didn't get invited. It's pretty rude when you think about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, the striplings were invited, but we weren't even invited. <laughs> Come on. He's yeah. not even on the team anymore, guys. Exactly. Shout so, out, Ross. Is that the Blue Jays Nation podcast over there? Come on, guys. <laughs> but to celebrate the Seegers, we decided to go ahead and go with the new giveaway. And we're going to stick on that seager I'm going to put up the picture, even though half, most of y'all probably can't even see it. But oh, that's the wrong one. Whatever. Luckily, nobody can see it. Boom. We are giving away an authentic, authenticated Corey Seeger signed photograph. That's the next one. So, uh, so go to our uh, official Dodgers Nation on Instagram. You're going to want to follow our friends at Elite Sports Collectibles, and you can enter to win that fine photograph that you may be seeing on the screen. And if you're listening, uh, you know what Corey Seager looks like, and you've seen his autograph. With that, we also have to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, which is a fine Tommy Lasorda autographed baseball. And, uh, well, I'm not going to push the drum roll because something might explode. <laughs> Something will indeed <laughs> blow up. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and announce the winner of this fine Tommy Lasorda autograph baseball. Again, brought to you by Elite Sports Collectibles. That's at Elite Sports Collectibles on Instagram. The winner of that ball is at C-Town Legend. Le- C-Town Legend. I don't know what any of that stands for. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, hopefully it's not Crown Town, which is Corona. Uh, you don't want to be from there. Um, Katie, C-A-D-Y. I think that's how you pronounce it. Maybe yes, maybe not. I tried my best, uh, but Katie, you have 48 hours to send us a DM on Instagram. We'll also send you one too, because you know, why not? We got time. Uh, you got 48 hours to respond. If not, it goes back into the void and uh, Madison also gets that ball Hell or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? But uh, yeah, make sure while you're doing that, follow our friends again on Instagram at elite sports collectibles. They're cool people. They do some raffles and they have some awesome, uh, honestly pretty damn cool, rare, uh, uh, goodies that they're they do a bunch of um, you know not auctions yeah raffles they they raffle away uh, baseball memorabilia those are the words those are the lyrics and if you're on the internet check out our our store gearup.la we have a bunch of stuff all the designs in there go to uh, support people like me and Brook and maybe a better streaming computer that we have that's at Gary's so um, it buys us internet it buys us more cups of internet. All right, so considering we're struggle busing here with that, we are going to uh, do our final segment here pretty quick, unless people are really in on it. So if you guys hear us, go ahead and do comment. Um, and, and Brooke, I'll, I'll ha- let you handle most of the news on this because you're the one who read more about it and wrote more about it. But I know that uh, it looks like the Universal DH is kind of maybe probably definitely perhaps dead in the water for the 2020 season, 2021 season. Yeah. Um, I, okay, man. It's just, it's just really, I just, I, I don't mind any rule changes. I don't mind adjustments to rules. I'm not the get off my lawn, old school baseball type of guy. I am just somebody looking for consistency in life though. That's all I really need. I'm just like, can you just be a little consistent for a little bit? Let me get my feet underneath me. Uh, the latest memo sent from major league baseball to the teams around the organi- or around the league is that you should prepare for there not to be a universal DH in 2021. What that means is number one, the national league will get their hitting pitchers back, which we're all so excited about. Um, but also a lot of pending free agents, their whole lives just got changed. They, they, are probably missing out on a lot of money that they probably could have got. Yeah, I'm looking at like Nelson Cruz and Marcelo Zuna types. Yeah. So that's the thing. But even more frustrating than that, it's going to be back on the table in like a couple of months. Yeah. Because once the 2021 season is over, the collective bargaining agreement with the players union in the league expires. And then that's back on the table as a discussion. And I'm predicting that the Universal DH will then be back in. It's a big issue. There's a lot of problems with it. It's really upsetting. It's really annoying that we have to keep going through this. I feel like it should have just been included in the conversations for this past season. Like, hey, we'll just ride this one out to the next collective bargaining agreement. If we want to take it out, we'll decide it then. But, you know, to flip-flop back and forth has been really frustrating. But, you know. 
Well, I, I would say yes. we we know that with Rob Manfred and and the Players Association, baseball and the Players Association, they don't think that far ahead. So, I mean, they didn't even think as far as the playoffs when they were uh, establishing the the groundwork for the 2020 season. So you want them to think all the way out for 2021? Are you mad? Come on now. That's a lot of, that's a lot of braining. I, I mean, look, again, all I'm asking is for consistency. At least Rob Manfred is consistently bad at his job. So at least I get that. You know, I'm real happy about that going for me. But uh, we, there was a lot of really good conversation about it today. Our, our good internet friend, Rich Hills Blister, he brought up a good point this yeah. morning. He said, when did everyone become such big fans of the DH? Do you remember when it first came out and everybody was very, oh, yeah. very angry about it? I, think, I, I, I know me, I think including you too, both of us were, were uh, like you, you know, you like to say, we're not, we're not get off our lawn type guys, but there is something that we like about the game that we know. Um, yeah. There was a lot I didn't like about that. Plus I look at the American league as a, as a lesser, uh, a lesser option of baseball. It's not as good. So I don't American know. Leagues don't need managers. That's the, that's the problem that I had. <laughs> but, um, yeah, here we are, you know, X amount of months later, however many, I don't feel like counting. I'm not one of them supercomputers. Uh, and, you know, we kind of, we, you know, we're, we're, I wouldn't say we're sad, but, you know, it's, uh, it kind of sucks to hear that it's probably not going to be there because it is sort of, I wouldn't say it's a better brand of baseball, but at least it's a more entertaining brand of baseball. And, yeah. and if the sole goal is to get fans to watch the game, new fans, you probably want more offensive production than, as you suggested, getting re-signing Rich Hill just so we could watch him uh, in the scrap zone, as our boy Ross Stripling called it, <laughs> attempting to swing just so we can see him running. It's That's tough, man. That's tough for pitchers to go from uh... – I mean, we've we've talked to them. They're like, yeah, we still kind of do take batting practice. Some of them do, still kept up on that and maintained during the course of the 2020 season. But to go from a year off of not having that part of your game being developed or worked on, that's tough, man. Like yeah. now you're all of a sudden you're going back. Hey, remember how you weren't facing 99 mile an hour fastballs and you're trying to bunt them down the third base line last year? But you got to do it this year. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry, man. That's a tough position to be put in. And I think... Uh, I think you run the risk for a lot of injuries that way, honestly. But also on top of that, we were some of the people that were like, why are you changing the game? Well, I don't like that. And I get it. Uh, you know, I look back on it now and I'm like, you know what? I think the the best way that Dave Roberts put it was the designated hitter. Not necessarily that the Dodgers have a really good DH, because if you look at their numbers, their DH was actually their weakest position throughout the course of the year. But if you look at it, it gives you a lot of flexibility. It lets you move people around, lets you take yeah. get people off their feet while also keeping their bat in the lineup. Um, I, I like what it did for the Dodgers this year. I think it yeah. kept a lot of people healthy. It kept a lot of people fresh, gave a lot of people a chance to get at bats. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I, I think it's good enough. You know, I, I don't mind it sticking around. Again, I just want consistency. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I like it played that way better than having you know your one big time bopper that can't run yeah. or play defense than having a big poppy style or type of player even though sure it would be nice to throw a you know 35 to 48 home run kind of guy in your your three or four hole every night and just show hey he's come up you're hit that's all you gotta do show up and hit i don't care what you do in between it, that is nice but being able to uh to kind of move people around like you said get some other people some different looks uh, so right. they treat it like a day off. I think um, the Dodgers, as they tend to do, sort of pioneered a, a better way to utilize a position. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, if it's gone, it's definitely going to change a lot for the Dodgers in 2021. It's going to change a lot for a lot of teams in 2021. Uh, right. It's also going to change a lot for the fans. So I was kind of surprised. Ran a poll. Well, we ran a poll earlier on our Dodgers Nation Twitter. It's still going, so the, these numbers that uh, y'all are about to not see because you guys can't see us. Um, people, uh, as much as we've seen that people say uh, they they want it, the vote says they didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is kind of surprising at, at this point in time. And I, this was like this was probably like an hour or two ago. So. 55% of people say that they were never a fan of the DH, so I take that as they're happy to see it not come back. Um, 
the other right. 40, well, the 45 percent here uh, love it. So, again, kind of kind of surprising. I think it'll be um, I you know, I think it's going to find its way, man. It's going to find its way. Come back. It's not completely nixed. I think they are just in the early goings again of poor communication into the media the same way they did trying to set up the the 2020 season and what the, the players association they're they're more worried about setting up like their their high council or whatever the hell they're they're sort of um their player reps for 2021 before having those discussions so right there's a strong chance and of course uh mlb is leveraging the the dh on uh what is it the the expanded playoffs continuing in 2021 yeah, that's. I think that's the thing that's going to be a part of the league's side of things throughout the course of this. <laughs> like, it's they just want more playoff teams in because more playoff teams mean more money and more revenue. So, I think that's inevitable. Hopefully, it's not the freaking sixteen team setup that we had going on this year. Yes. So terrible. Very so terrible. Even Rob, even Rob Manfred had said himself, like, "Dude, I didn't want the sixteen team set up." Like, it's like, well, well, how did that happen then, Rob? How did we get here? I He's like, "No, I didn't mean sixteen, but we have sixteen. It's like, what? would you like draw them out of a hat and be like, whatever we get, that's how many teams are going to be in the playoffs this year?" Digging into a few of the comments we got going here. Appreciate you guys. I think I think the the people watching us are way behind when where we're at because of the buffering issues. So again. We apologize for the stream being so bad. Next time we, we are on, it will not be this bad, or you get your money back guaranteed. There is no money involved. Um, uh, we got Lee Yankee King saying uh, keep the DH in the NL. DJ Jesse saying he wants to keep it going. Uh, Tina has said a few times, we hear you. So I don't know if like, like oh, we're back, sort of, we hear you. Or uh, don't worry, keep going. She's being we supportive. She's being supportive. She but, needs us to know that we, she can hear us, and we are doing a good job. Tina, for what we're do. Tina has always been. Uh, she's always been great here on Dodgers Nation. We appreciate you. Uh, I liked uh, Chet Kroll bringing back an old classic. Uh, <laughs> the real discussion should be if a hot dog is a sandwich or not. You had uh, <laughs> you've had more time. You had more time to think on this. Where are you at now in the hot dog sandwich uh, debate? Um, uh, a hot dog is a hot dog, and a sandwich is a sandwich. Lies. Yeah. It's meat in bread. Boom, sandwich. Mm, I don't know about that. Wait. There it is. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. If, if, if the hot dog is broken up finely into circular shapes, then it's a sandwich, a meatball sandwich. Oh. Yeah, and you're and we're learning. DJ Jesse says it's a torta. <laughs> that's also correct. Yeah. Why not? Spot on, but that's a sandwich. Come on. Now, yeah, guys. but not. It's a different sandwich. Uh, Leslie doesn't hate the Universal DH. It's more opportunities for batting, which is fun. It could even get you a net bat in a major league game. Brook me three, and that's really what we all want. Oh. I don't think the only reason we talk to big league players and we interview them, we don't do it for you guys. We do it for us. We're trying to get a tryout. We're trying to get, we're trying to go to the tree outs, but they won't let us. No one's hooked it up yet. I've hinted at several people that I can throw a baseball and hasn't seemed to pique their interest yet, guys. We're did working you, on it. Did you send them the, uh, the Arenado video from early on in quarantine? They might never talk to us again. If we send them that, I don't, I don't know if we want to pull that card yet. Oh, man. Well, that's all we're going to try to struggle through today, guys. Uh, a little bit shorter than usual, but um, we kind of rushed through some of these topics, not being 100% sure if everybody could hear everything or if it was even working right or if we have to stay late and re-record this. <laughs> so no. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. But until then, we will be uh, not buffering as much on the internet at dodgersnation.com do check us out that is a website where the dodgers uh stuff lives Duh. i'll subscribe to lou heaven we are a podcast and we are on itunes spotify iheart radio google play stitcher radio player fm everywhere your podcast is available for free that is where we live we also live on youtube youtube.com slash dodgers nation tv we're putting out new uh, fun, exciting, different content uh, every single day, just about on our YouTube. So do check that out. Hit that notification bell. You'd be glad you did. A lot of fun, guys. I'm at BrookMe3. This other guy, Blurry, next to me is at RealFRG. We're both on Twitter and Instagram. We're at Dodgers Nation on Twitter. 
at official Dodgers Nation on Instagram. Make sure to check us out. Check out that giveaway because you're going to want to win that giveaway. It's a good giveaway, courtesy of Elite Sports Collectibles. Also, we'll give them a follow. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your comments when you could get them in. Thank you for your patience while we continue to work things out in this new world that we're living in. Thank you for hanging out with us. We appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Bye.